From a psycho-spoiled brat who tries to burn down my house to an entitled rich kid who wants to kill me, these are some of the most insane spoiled kid stories of all time. So the subscriber who submitted the story was having a birthday, and he believed, or at least his parents believed, and therefore he was forced to believe, that when he had a birthday party, he should invite everybody in the class because if there was a few kids in his class he didn't invite, they might have felt left out because he had a class of like 20, 25 people. It wasn't a class of hundreds. So yeah, if only had two kids weren't invited to his birthday party, they definitely would have known, and they definitely probably would have felt a little bad. So anyways, everyone in the subscribers class, including the spoiled kid, was invited. There was a kid in the class who we're just going to call the spoiled kid. This kid was annoying, spoiled, just like d thought he deserved everything, and uh, he proved himself to be even worse than you could ever imagine. So let's just skip ahead to the day of the birthday party. It's a fun birthday party. They're having it at one of the, you know, the kind of like the mall birthday parties where it's like you got laser tag and pizza and like it's, it's at like one of those places, one of those fun events like that. Yeah, the subscriber was having one of those and immediately as the spoiled kid got there, just because the whole place wasn't, I don't know, covered in gold plated, I, dude, I don't even know. He was upset. He was grumpy, probably just because he wanted all the attention on himself as always. But guess what? The subscriber and the rest of his friends in the class, they weren't paying the spoiled kid any attention because you know what? One way or another, they were going to have a good time and the spoiled kid was not going to ruin that for them. That is one thing that they made extra, extra clear. Anyways, right? So sure enough, uh, the spoiled kid does find a way to ruin everything because it is finally time to cut the cake. And so sure enough, a cake comes out with a bunch of candles on it. I think the subscriber's turning like 13 or something. So there was 13 candles. Everyone starts singing. And once they're almost done with singing, you know, I don't, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys have had like a, I don't know if this isn't true for birthdays outside of the United States, but, you know, they come out with a candle, you sing happy birthday, and then the, the birthday boy or girl blows out the candle. But no, the spoiled kid walks up and attempts to blow out the candles. He goes up, he's like, <gasps> and like the person, like I think it was like the mom of uh, the subscriber who is holding the cake, very quickly sees what's happening and pulls the cake out of the way before the spoiled kid is able to blow out the candles. Obviously, everyone is a little bit confused because, I mean, you, we all know that it's it's always the birthday kid who blows out the candles, bro. It's not some random kid who shows up, especially one that no one likes. And the spoiled kid's like, why'd you take it away from me? I was almost about to blow the candles out. And the subscriber's mom's like, these aren't your candles to blow out. Like, that's why I took it away. And the spoiled kid's like, what? No, you don't understand. I really, 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 really want to blow out those candles. So please let me do it. And everyone is kind of just looking at the spoiled kid with this look of, uh, what, bro? Like, I don't know if you've ever been to a birthday party before, but, uh, no, you're not allowed to blow out some other kid's birthday candle. Like, what? Yeah, so sure enough, the mom's like, no, like... On your birthday, you can do whatever you want, but this is my son's birthday. Honestly, the subscriber's mom was being super chill about the whole thing. If I was the parent, maybe I wouldn't be as chill. I don't know. But sure enough, the subscriber's mom being super chill about the whole thing, and um, the spoiled kid's like, but, 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 I want to blow out the candles. And, uh, you know, just saying that you want to do something in real life doesn't mean that everyone's going to be like, Oh my god, I didn't know that you wanted to do it. I will totally let you do it now. No, in real life, they're going to be like, tough stuff, bro. I don't know what to say. So sure enough, the subscriber blew out his candles. Everyone applauded for him. But you know who didn't applaud for him? The spoiled kid. Because the spoiled kid was angry. He was malding. He was grumpy. He was not a happy camper, to say the least. And so sure enough, the spoiled kid is coming together to figure out how he is going to get his revenge and get some form of revenge he does so anyways the spoiled kid finds the pack of matches that they use to light the candles right before because if you don't light the candles right before you take out the cake half the candles are going to blow out the others it's kind of a risk if you just leave them sitting there so they had a match of candles or a match of matches a book of matches on the table and so the spoiled kid 
grabs one of the blown out candles from the birthday cake um, because it was cut and everyone ate the cake or whatever, but they didn't give the candles to the kids just in case they'd accidentally eat them. They put them aside on the table. So when no one was looking, the spoiled kid went to the table, grabbed one of the candles, and uh, found the matches and lit it on fire, right? So now he has a lit candle. And he walks around, and he's about to he's about to go over to where all the paper plates and like the uh, the this like all the paper plates and the napkins and all the flammable stuff is, and he's about to light the whole thing on fire when thank God there was a parent in the area who saw what was going down, snatched the candle out of the spoiled kid's hand, and is like, "What were you about to do?" And the spoiled kid's like, "Uh." nothing, but obviously, right, the parent was able to put the context clues together and realized that the spoiled kid was not about to do, quote-unquote, nothing. He was about to do something, and he was about to do something big. So they bring him to the subscriber's mom and says, I found this little boy in, like, the with a, with a lit candle about to light the place on fire. And obviously the subscriber's mom calls the spoiled kid's parents. They show up and they're, like, I don't know, they're super fancy car or whatever, and they take him away quickly. But if you thought that that spoiled brat was bad, then you are not prepared for what is about to come. Because this all started at a summer camp. So the subscriber was going to a sleepaway camp for the first time. This was super exciting. But basically, right, when they got to the camp, or when the subscriber got to the camp cabin, there was an option of top bunk or bottom bunk. So basically, each kid who got there was already assigned to a bed, but it was really first come, first serve for if you want a top bunk or if you want a bottom bunk. And the subscriber really want a top bunk because, I mean, he's never been in a bunk bed before. I mean, I'm sure he's seen some at his friends' houses or whatever, but he's never been in a, been in a bunk bed, and top bunk is always more fun. I'd always choose bottom bunk because I was afraid of rolling out of the top bunk, but uh, very clearly, top bunk is more fun. So sure enough, he gets there, and he chooses top bunk, and he's already kind of, like, unpacked all of his stuff, and about, you know, an, uh, two hours later... The spoiled kid arrived. So they didn't know immediately that this kid was the spoiled kid, but this kid was the spoiled kid. He had never been told no in his life. So when he gets there, he's like, oh, 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 I want the top bunk. And, uh, you know, the camp counselor has to explain to him that since he didn't get there first, he is not able to get the top bunk, right? And the spoiled kid's like, no, 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 you don't understand. I asked nicely, so I shall receive. And the camp counselor looks at him with this kind of blank expression of, I get it, that you asked nicely, but this is the real world, bro. I'm not your parents. I'm not saying, oh, uh, Jeremy, all you got to do is ask nicely and I'll give you a billion dollars. Oh, thank you for asking nicely. No, dude, this is the real world, man. Other people exist. So sure enough, right, um, uh, the spoiled kid is not very happy. So he goes up to the subscriber, and here's the thing. If the spoiled kid went up to the subscriber and said, hey, I've always wanted top bunk. I know you got here first, but can we like trade off or maybe you could offer it to me? Saying it like that, I would have no issues with it. You want something, so you go about asking for it in a way that, and in a nice way. But no, the spoiled kid, the first interaction he has with the subscriber, his bunkmate, he goes up to him and says, I demand that you give me the top bunk right now or there will be consequences. Little did the subscriber know that consequences meant this kid was uh, literally about to make an attempt on his freaking life, but we're skipping ahead. So uh, the subscriber's like, what? And the spoiled kid's, I will say it one more time and then I will not be repeating myself. You have one chance to give me the top bunk or else there will be consequences subscriber simply looks at the spoiled kid and is kind of just like, bro, what are you saying right now, man? What are you, what are you saying right now, bro? What's coming out of your mouth? Because it's just not making a lot of sense, man. I'm, I'm keeping a stack with you. It's just not making a lot of sense. So, I mean, very clearly the subscriber says, no, I got here first. That's tough. Look, the subscriber wasn't going to be a pushover here. He wanted top bunk. He got here first. Unlucky, you know, if he didn't get there first and the, you know, the spoiled kid got the top bunk, you really think the spoiled kid would have been sharing the top bunk with him? Or no, 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 he didn't even ask to share. You think if he demanded the spoiled kid gave him the top bunk, that would have worked out even in the slightest? No. 
Absolutely not. You know, at this point, he's just looking out for himself. And fair enough. I totally understand it. The spoiled kid, however, does not take getting a no nicely. He does not take it well. And he's about to do something literally criminal. So it's the first night. They do a bunch of fun camp activities, even though the spoiled kid is secretly super angry. But they do a lot of fun camp activities. And um, it's about time for them to go to bed. So they brush their teeth, they take a shower, they do whatever you need to do. And uh, sure enough, it is finally time for them to go to bed. And, this, and you know, the subscriber goes on the top bunk, and the spoiled kid reluctantly, reluctantly goes on the bottom bunk. And the subscriber starts to drift off to sleep. Starts to drift off to sleep, right? And that's when he is awoken because he can't breathe, right? He has a feeling of like he's not able to breathe. So he wakes up really stressed. I mean, I don't know if that's ever happened to you before. This happened to me once when I was like super sick and like my nose got all jammed up. It was the scariest experience ever. I was up for like hours afterwards. And that was just because my nose was clogged. Like I could still, I guess, breathe through my mouth. But the, the subscriber wakes up and he just can't breathe. And he wakes up and he opens his eyes. And you know who he sees above him? The spoiled kid. The spoiled kid is literally holding a pillow to his mouth and nose. Thankfully, the spoiled kid is a little weakling, and he immediately, like, as soon as the subscriber kind of, like, tries to lift up, the spoiled kid flies off of him, and he's like, <gasps> subscriber takes a massive breath in, and is like, what is wrong with you? And, like, immediately other campers wake up, and the spoiled kid then goes, he's like, I wasn't doing anything. And, uh, you know, another camper who was sitting next to them, like, was, like, was like, no, I saw the very tail end of it when, like, there was all this commotion. I, like, opened, like, the guy in the bunk next to them was like, no, 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 I saw what happened. Because at this point, the camp counselor came in and a bunch of other guys were, like, woken up. But the guy next to both of them was like, no, 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 I was, like, awake, like, I woke up because, like, the spoiled kid was making a lot of noise. And I look up and he's above and he's on the subscriber with a pillow to his face. I don't know what he was trying to do. So very obviously, like, he was thrown out of camp immediately because, uh, yeah, that would literally kill someone, bro. Like, I don't know if you know, but you kind of need oxygen to survive at least a little bit. Like, are you serious right now? So, yeah, uh, believe it or not, uh, the spoiled kid wanted the top bunk so bad he was willing to try and suffocate someone below. Like, I, I just can't even believe it right now. But at the end of the day, spoiled kids be wilding, bro. That's all. The main, meth the main message for you guys to take away is spoiled kids be wilding. But if you thought that this spoiled kid was a psychopath, then you are not ready for this entitled brat. You are simply not ready. So the subscriber and a bunch of his school friends are at the mall. And one of the school friends is this spoil kid. However, this spoil kid no one's really that close with, except one of the subscriber's friends. Like, his mom is super close with the spoil kid's mom. So the subscriber's friend is, like, forced to bring the spoil kid along and everything that he does because his mom is like, you know how close I am with spoil kid's mom. Spoil kid is not having struggling getting friends, so you gotta be nice to him. Kind of doing standard mom stuff like that. So for that reason, the spoiled kid would always tag along a lot with what like the kids were doing or whatever. And the subscriber was kind of, he was okay with it. He wouldn't have necessarily invited the spoiled kid because I don't know he's the spoiled kid bro and he's not tr he's not trying to mess with that. But at the end of the day, it was one out of like ten kids that they were rolling with. So if you have one bad apple, like whatever, it really doesn't matter. So sure enough, right, they make it to the mall one day, and they're playing laser tag. And I don't know if you guys ever ever played laser tag in the mall, but it is one of my, like, peak childhood memories. I mean, I would go in there with all the boys, we'd be playing laser tag. Like, it would be, like, it w we'd be reenacting, like, freaking Star Wars, and it was so fire. I would honestly, if given the opportunity, and I probably will, I will go in there again and play la laser tag with the boys once again. I don't care if I'm 20, dude. I'm going to keep doing it. But anyways, this is laser, camp go laser tag gone terribly, terribly wrong just because the spoiled kid or the entitled kid who believed that he was entitled to everything believed that he was also entitled to winning at all costs, as you will see. So they get in there. And the subscriber, you know, he's just, you know, they're all there. They play their first round of laser tag or whatever. 
And at first, the subscriber, and they do teams. The first round is teams. So at first, the subscriber and the spoil kid, they're on the same team. So the subscriber and the spoil kid, they're just, you know, they're doing their thing. And uh, they're, they're actually pretty good teammates. The spoil kid is really, really competitive, but he's at least pretty good at laser tag. So the subscriber and the spoil kid actually kind of like team up a little bit, even though they're on the same team. They kind of do like a tag team. So he's like, all right, you flank them. I'll go straight on. Like, I'll be the distraction. You and you go ahead and snipe them. Yeah, so actually the subscriber and the spoil kid, things were going extremely well at first. Because when they were on the same team, both of them being super competitive, they were able to absolutely crush the second team. However, the second round was a free-for-all, basically meaning no one could team up and you could shoot anyone, right? So this is when the subscriber versus the spoil kid started to get a little bit spicy. Just a little bit spicy, right? Because sure enough, right, the subscriber, um, you know, he's, he's a little bit better than the spoil kid. So sure enough, he hits the spoil kid with the laser and the spoil kid is now officially out. However, the spoiled kid's like, that's not fair. I wasn't paying attention. You got me when my back was turned. And like, bro, I don't know if you know the rules of laser tag, but you don't need to announce to everyone, oh yeah, by the way, um, I'm about to get you with my laser, so you better turn around and pay attention. No, the whole point is like, you can get them when they're not paying attention. If anything, like a stealth attack is probably going to be better than like whatever else you were planning to do. So yeah, I don't totally know what the spoiled kid was going on about. He was probably just so mad that he lost. However, the spoiled kid was about to take things into a much worse direction. He was about to go way crazy with power. So basically, the spoiled kid is out, which means if you've never played laser tag before, once you're shot with one of the lasers on your vest, it basically turns off your laser gun itself, so now you can't go around shooting other people. However, that doesn't mean that the spoiled kid has is done, right? He is not done with this. He is about to enact his revenge. So basically, the subscriber is going around, he's sniping down people, he's good, being in good positions, right? And that's when he sees the spoiled kid walking towards him. And he's like, uh, I know I got this kid out. Like, he's not going to shoot. Like, he can't zap me with his laser gun because I've already gotten out. Like, or not, I've already gotten out, but I've already gotten him out. It's not like he can do anything. I'm not too worried. However, the spoiled kid keeps approaching the subscriber, and it's really weird. Um, and the subscriber's just like, uh, hello, sir. Like, does he want to help me with tactics? Because we were good to get... No. The spoil kid lifts up the, the, the laser gun. Because the laser gun is a hard piece of plastic. It's not like a little dinky thing. The laser gun is a hard, heavy piece of plastic. And he lifts it above his head. And the, and the subscriber is just looking at the spoil kid. And he watches as the spoil kid swings. The subscriber really quickly dodges the thing, like the, 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 the laser gun. But the spoil kid keeps swinging on the subscriber. And if like he makes contact, he could do some like actual damage. It's not like he's swinging a baseball bat, but it's still pretty heavy and it's going to hurt. So sure enough, right, at this point, the subscriber versus the spoil kid, they're having their own match. They're not even playing laser tag anymore. The subscriber is playing dodge, and the spoil kid is playing beat the living crap out of this kid with my laser gun, right? So at this point, someone, one of the, like, the, the staff or whatever who's working the laser gun sees that this kid is, like, swinging super hard on the subscriber and is, like, barely missing him. So sure enough, within, like, a five minutes or so, the mall security get there. And it's perfect timing, too, because the subscriber, who is able to, like, dodge all the swings by the spoiled kid, accidentally trips on, like, one of the uh, ornaments or decorations that they had around in the laser tag to make it more authentic. And he's on the ground. And this is when the subscribe or the spoiled kid walks above the subscriber, lifts the, la like, lifts, like, the laser tag gun above his head, and is preparing to smack down as hard as possible which could seriously do some real damage when this, uh, the spoiled kid is taken back by two of the security guards and he is dragged out of there. Yeah, so basically the spoiled kid is in the security guard's office until his mom comes and picks him up. And honestly, at this point, the subscriber called his mom to pick all of them up. And let's just say that the spoiled kid was no longer asked to hang out with them. But if you thought that this spoiled kid was evil, you thought he was evil, at least... He didn't try and seriously 
kill the subscriber like this one did. This is out of all the Spoiled Kid Story videos I've told you so far, this one is the most dark and insane. So this all happened because the subscriber started dating the Spoiled Kid's crush. So the Spoiled Kid wasn't liked by many people because of the way that he let his parents' money get to his head. I've said this before, but even if your parents have a lot of money, genuinely, if you're a good person, I don't care, man. As long as you're a good person, you're good in my book. And uh, yeah, but the, the Spoiled Kid let his parents' money go to his head. So he's super entitled, super bratty, and for that reason, a lot of kids didn't want to hang out with him, and a lot of girls didn't like him. There are some points in your life where if, like, kids flex their parents' money, girls will actually be like, well, at least he's going to be a safe option. Eventually, girls will realize that, oh, well, he's actually going to have terrible character, but, uh, I mean. But anyways, at this point, you know, girls were just not interested in the spoiled kid. And the spoiled kid had a massive crush on this girl who we're just going to call Stacy, right? Because uh, Stacy's mom's got it going on. But anyways, so sure enough, right, you know, the spoiled kid has a massive crush on this girl named Stacy. She wants nothing to do with him because he's kind of a massive brat, right? He's just a massive brat at this point. But uh, sure enough, the subscriber has been talking to Stacy for months at this point, and eventually they make it official. And word gets out extremely quickly that they made it official. When, when the spoiled kid hears this, he's absolutely crushed. He's absolutely devastated. But here's the thing, right? I've been in this situation a billion times. No, I've not been in the subscriber situation a billion times. I've been in the spoiled kid situation a billion times. It sucks, and you're going to be very sad for a little bit of time. But like everything, time heals, or at least mends most all wounds. So he should have just given it some time. But the spoiled kid was angry. The spoiled kid was mad. And he was not going to wait. There was not a chance that he was not going to try and get his revenge. So one day, they were having beef stew for lunch. You might be thinking, Connor, you're filling this video with obnoxious, irrelevant details. No. Them having beef stew for lunch is a critical detail that you must know. So they're having beef stew for lunch. And anyways... The, the spoiled kid, before lunch, walks into the janitor's closet and grabs as many of the chemicals as he can. He goes in, in disclaimer, obviously, do not do anything that the spoiled kids have been doing. Seriously bad. Don't endorse it. I'm just telling these stories. I just got to throw this in here for the sake of it. But anyways, the spoiled kid is in the janitor's closet and he grabs all the chemicals he can see. And he grabs them over. And anyways, the spoiled kid is sitting, or not the spoiled kid, the subscriber goes up to the front of the line and the subscriber grabs, I don't know, some of the beef stew and he puts in a little cup or whatever. And so sure enough, the spoiled kid sees this and the subscriber goes down, he finds a table and he puts, you know, he sits down with some friends and they all put down their, uh, their trays that have the beef stew or whatever. And um, they then they, they leave it at the table they leave their food at the table so that they can go up and they can get, grab dessert or whatever, and they all walk up. So right now, there are four beef stews on the table. The spoiled kid has intentionally seen which one the subscriber who stole, you know, Stacy, the girl, or, yeah, the Sta Stacy, the girl that he's in love with. He knows exactly which one of the beef stews is his. So the, so the spoiled kid walks over, and he starts taking out all the janitor's chemicals, right? all the like the the bleach the cleaning detergents all that stuff that's super poisonous and super toxic and he starts pouring it all into the subscriber or the subscriber's beef stew because the subscriber might just be like oh the beef stew just tastes funny today and he'd take take enough bites that at a minimum he would be extremely sick so at this point, you know, the spoiled kid has poured all these chemicals into the subscriber's beef stew. And since the beef stew was super thick and murky, it really didn't make a color change and it didn't really smell that different. I think it might have had a little bit of a pungent smell, but sometimes beef stew is a little pungent, a little acidic, right? So sure enough, the spoiled kid, he walks away, putting all the chemicals back into his backpack. And the subscriber sits down and is about to take a bite when this random kid walks over and says, stop, 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 stop. And uh, so sure enough, the subscriber looks up at this random kid and the four other kid or the three other kids at the subscriber's table are also really confused. So they look up at this kid and this kid's like, 
I, I don't know if you're going to believe me, but you need to. Like, I just saw the spoiled kid over there, and he points over to the spoiled kid who's sitting alone. For good reason, as you guys will see. The spoiled kid who's sitting alone, he said, I, I just saw him pour all this, like, all these chemicals and really weird stuff into your... I, I, I don't understand, but I saw, I saw him pour all these, like, chemicals and weird stuff into your, into your beef stew. He says, just take a smell. And sure enough, the subscriber's like, okay. And he like really takes a whiff. He's like, oh God. And he like kind of passes around the beef stew. And okay, if there's like chemicals, please don't take whiffs of it, guys. But sure enough, all the other kids are like, oh my God. So they bring it to the front office and they bring the witness, right? And sure enough, the front office somehow gets it tested. Somehow they realize that there are a bunch of chemicals in there. And so, yeah, one day, uh, or not, actually later that day, the spoiled kid is sitting in class when two security guards burst into the class, take him and drag him out of the classroom, right? So the spoiled kid is expelled from the school, and from what I'm told, there's still an ongoing investigation. Because the thing is, if the subscriber took enough bites, bro, click on the video died. on the screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it.